A long time ago, a girl called Cinderella lived in a big old house with her cruel stepmother, the dame, and her two bad-tempered stepsisters, Nellie and Melba. One day, Nellie and Melba heard that Prince Michael was inviting all the eligible young women to a masked ball to find a bride. Cinderella sat under a chestnut tree, thinking about how much she wanted to go to the ball and meet Prince Michael. But she knew that the dame would never allow her to go. I'll never go to the ball. The next day, the prince's servant came to the house to deliver invitations to the ball. I'll have three. The dame asked for three invitations, one for her and one each for Nellie and Melba. Poor Cinderella was left to do a long list of chores while the dame, Nellie and Melba went to the village to buy cloth to make the ball gowns. Cinderella finished all the chores just as her stepmother and stepsisters arrived home. Cinderella! Cinderella was sent upstairs to start sewing the ball gowns. The night of the ball had arrived. The dame, Nellie and Melba were dressed in the gowns that Cinderella had made. They set off in their horse-drawn carriage. Poor Cinderella sat under the chestnut tree crying. Suddenly the tree started to shimmer. Then, as if by magic, a kindly old woman appeared. It was Cinderella's fairy godmother. When the fairy godmother waved her little wand, Cinderella's worn-out work clothes were magically transformed into a beautiful ball gown. She made a beautiful tiara for Cinderella's hair and then turned a pumpkin into a magnificent coach. A pair of frogs became horses and a pair of robins became coachmen. It's beautiful! As Cinderella climbed into the coach, the fairy godmother noticed she needed slippers. In a twinkling, a pair of glass slippers appeared on Cinderella's feet. As the coach pulled away, the fairy godmother warned Cinderella to be home by midnight because that's when the magic spell ended. At the palace, Nellie and Melba were doing their best to impress the prince when the most beautiful girl he had ever seen walked into the ballroom. Prince Michael took Cinderella by the hand. They danced for hours. In fact, when the clock struck midnight, no one was more surprised than Cinderella. Suddenly, she remembered the fairy godmother's warning. And without even so much as a goodbye, she ran from the palace, down the stairs and into her coach, leaving one of her glass slippers on the steps. The next day, Prince Michael mounted his horse, holding the glass slipper in search of the girl he danced with at the ball. When the slipper failed to fit either Nellie or Melba, the dame was furious. But she was even more furious when Cinderella's foot slipped easily into the shoe. Prince Michael had found his bride, and as he lifted Cinderella onto the back of his horse, he declared his love for her. I love you, Cinderella. And the prince and Cinderella lived happily ever after.